Welcome. This is the August 21st Open ZFS production user call. We have Jan, Andrew, Stu, Santi, Rob, Greg, Eva, Steve, and myself. And it looks like one Open ZFS 2.2.5 has arrived. And the JSON output arrived in Maine, which is of huge interest to the group here. And Rob, it sounds like you are open to telling us about a few of the other features that have hit both Maine and the latest release and recent releases. Uh, yeah, uh, so yes, 225 um, is out. It's mostly uh, bug fixes, obviously. Um, there's some good user space uh, if you use ZDB and things like that a lot. There's some good, nice stuff in there, just improved crash reporting and things that a developer likes. So, uh, there's that. Um, yeah, on uh, on master, which we really should grow up and call main at this point, but anyway, hmm. um. <laughs> so, uh, that's, uh, yes, that's got the JSON output on a great many, uh, uh, ZFS and ZPool commands, which is quite cool. Um, I mean, it's exactly what you'd think. I, do, I think it'll take a while before people really start to scratch the surface on that, hmm. um, which is quite, quite good. There's not a lot more to say about that one. Um, uh, there's, uh, much of the fast dedupe has now landed. Um, so this is the uh, the work that uh, Alan Jude has been talking about a lot. There's a in the last couple of conferences he's been at. There's a good uh, there's a good uh, video. Oh, my bus is arriving. There's a good video from um, the Developer Summit last year that describes what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, the major features that just went in that, that have gone in are uh, you can set a quota on your uh, on your set of quota on your VDIP, uh, um, uh, VDIP, just so it will stop deduplicating and growing your table once uh, it reaches that limit. Uh, you can uh, on classic dedupe or the new uh, improved or both. Uh, improved. Pardon. Um, this is all. This is all improved. You get it. The old, okay. the old uh, on this format is still compatible, and if you are already a DDP user, it will continue to work as you always have. But what, will the quota work with an existing system? That's right. a good. No, that's a good question. I think it might. Um, it had no, that that, you know, that whole feature set was about eight features, and I'm just thinking about where sure. exactly in the stack it's plugged in. Um, so. It might. It I might. I asked because that was one of the <laughs> earliest seatbelts I ever heard about relating to the original dedupe. I was like, well, what if we at least prevented people from hitting that wall? Yeah, I feel like that one might more than might not. There's some things that definitely won't. But, uh, but yeah. And then there's also the, um, the, the sort of big ticket items, the log feature, which um, uh, tries to fix a lot of the performance and memory. Uh, problems with the um, and you know, with I worked on that a lot last year, so um, I'm kind of pleased with that one. But um, whether it nails everything remains to be seen. But um, hopefully, it will be good enough that people can start trying it um, realistically and weigh the pros and cons. Um, and then hopefully, that's a good base for us to, to build upon. So that would be a, that that landed last week. That would be a Nice. Should be, should be tagged any day now. I, I would say with the next week. It's not released, obviously, but um, that's the point where we will start to try and tighten it up. Uh, I think your signal uh, is weakening in motion. <laughs> is weakening in motion. <laughs> You're breaking up a little bit, but. All right. Maybe you want to come back to me then? Um, I, oh, I have no yeah, idea totally. what signal is going to be like on this yeah, sure. strip, so which is. No worries. No, thank you so much for right. that update. Uh, uh, so that is fantastic. And do think about if, you know, you've looked at, if Jan had asked if uh, the uh, UnionFS like functionality that I believe originally Alan looked at and you looked at ever happened, but we can circle back to that soon. Um, Anyway, that's that's very exciting, and thank you so much for the update to the 
the recent releases and future ones. Uh, does anyone else have topics or well, shall we hop into the summit? Alrighty then, I have a bunch of internal housekeeping for this upcoming user and developer summit, uh, such as I see uh, Fossey had uh, air filters and air quality meters. We can probably talk them into loaning or renting us. And um, do, 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 uh, I didn't have a chance to hit Matt for his uh, kind of streaming replication proposal from long, long ago, but it's topics like that and, you know, whatever's next after JSON output and what other just super user facing and or heavy lifting features we want to discuss and flesh out as much as possible, both in advance and in person, just so that people can develop most efficiently. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I know that Eva has quite the network testing lab, it sounds like, just north of here. So maybe we can coordinate on what hardware we might want to have show up there. Uh, I'm looking down the list here. Does anyone see a topic they want to take some ownership of? I've, I think I've got a few names by them. We've got uh, Brian. Oh, I'll reach out to Brian. Uh, Greider, yeah. But what I'm hoping to do is have us as, as prepared for a hybrid format insofar as we have a little research, a very efficient report on the sort of the situation on any of these topics, and then, you know, just efficiently bang through where we want to take things and, you know, what will meet it, it, as many needs as possible. Um, Anyone, anyone? Uh, Greg, I know MPAA is somewhat close to your wheelhouse along with Stu. Or rephrase, uh, just a meeting, what have you had a chance down. to think about? Go ahead, sorry, repeat that. There's a part lower down that says, uh, to parts about uh, load testing with the FIO workloads. Yes. Uh, I have a bunch of those that I've checked out from various points in the last year from different releases. And so I do have the regression tests and all of the FIO um, workloads for that are probably being referenced right there. I'm so staring at it, but I'm missing it. Uh, oh, uh, let's see. Did I whiz by it? Oh, did I see a marker? Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's uh, under unpublished candidate, agreed on benchmarking and profiling. Oh, yes. So uh, unpublished, unpublished. I see one unpublished. Here we go. Yes, great. Okay, so Eva, uh, so what sources have you been pulling bio workloads from? From my own workloads. Oh, uh, oh, but the, um, yeah, for testing. And then the FIO workload simulation that's on, let's see, the first bullet point there. Um, oh, that where it says, where is that repo of workloads? Uh, yes, that's been my yeah. kind of question for years. Okay. I do have that repo. Um, you are full of surprises. Okay. Yes. I, uh, I've done a lot of storage uh, engineering work in the past, like, five years just in my job, and then before that for many, many years. I will give, elevate you there. Okay, uh, that is great news. And academically, I'm like, okay, fine. What did the ftp.cdrom.com workload look like in 96? Just how would one quickly just smoke test, throw that out there on some Raspberry Pi, whatever. Just so, okay, we can have that conversation in parallel, um, but be it, what's a mail server look like? What's a database server look like? What does a video editing system look like? If you've got any of that to just get us moving, uh, let's go oh, yeah. on how to uh, sort of, identify what we have and what we're missing. Because uh, once we have a little grid of, hey, there are workloads we haven't put a moment of thought into, let's do some of that thinking together. Thank you, Eva, that is inspiring. Sure, okay, I've got a bunch of baseline um, metrics for that. So we should have a separate 
discussion because it, it will take up some time. Very well. I look forward to that. Okay. Uh, who wants to be like Eva? Who's got some uh, working yet potentially incomplete uh, coverage in be it testing, be it uh, reporting metrics, etc. Greg, you were great about some uh, uh, SNMP coverage, and if if one wants to scroll down, I'll put the doc here. Scroll down to the nifty, beautiful graphics that Greg met. I encourage you to do that. Uh, yeah. Let me rephrase that completely, Greg. Do you want to be our go-to? You might have a meeting. Uh, our go-to. Uh, metrics person, metrics, metrics and graphing? I, I would like to, I just don't know if I'm the right person for that. Um, Your graphics are beautiful. It's a good start. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe we can uh, in chat or whatever. Okay. Or, 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 or we can even talk about it here. Uh, I'm just wondering exactly what, what would the expectation be. I've never been involved in one of these. so. Are you asking me to speak on the internet to people or just supply you with a write-up? I, I don't know what it is that we're after. Fair enough. If it's new territory, we'll we'll explore what that can be and what best meets your okay. your experiences. Uh, uh, at a bare minimum, it is like explain the beauty that went into this graphic. I'm going to go look for it just uh, because it was uh, very impressive. I'm pretty sure it was on this call. And yeah. about four meetings ago. Yeah, it was. So yeah, it was a big picture, so we scrolled. It was no giant. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. But it was. It's worth. It. It's worth it. Humans. There's about visualization. One oh, last. Oh, it is. I just seen SMT. Either. Yeah, and your name was with it, but it was a big old pretty picture. Come on. Uh, and on that topic in parallel, start thinking about encryption because there was this miraculous, here we go, um, this kind of thing. Uh, show of hands, virtually, even if it's uh, whatever, using the app or not. Like, uh, is that the kind of thing people want to talk about in a session? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it, yeah, okay. So hold that thought. We'll we'll coordinate in parallel. But um, that said, there was a very pleasant surprise on the Beehive call, which was a demonstration of TPM emulation, such that oh, well, what's it look like if you have a shared TPM between machines and uh, emulated, and it's pushing out ZFS encryption keys or SSH keys or other or entropy. I mean, that's a uh, territory I want to explore, but it's the encryption aspect that's come up in a few times, and I've got that highlighted there. If anyone wants to step forward and join that working group, let me know. Try and inspire people here. Don't know if it's working. Uh, machine readable, writable JSON, SNMP. Uh, uh, Greg can help with it. So there's a name. Uh, so is uh, MPAA encryption and security jumping out for anyone? I, I wouldn't be comfortable I mean, I talking about TPM, I guess. That's fine. Like I, I, yeah, I'd be reading from a paper, basically. Um, I, I've gone through two TPM uh, audits. And, you know, typically they come in and then um, they run all their tools for a couple of days and then they give you a report about things that need to be uh, corrected or can be made better. But as far as encryption, we're, we're not using it. The, 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 the role there for us is if the data is in flight, then it's encrypted. And, and in flight can mean across the internet or on a hard drive, a USB, a laptop. So basically anything that leaves our physical premises has to be encrypted, but we're not doing any uh, encryption at rest kind of thing. If somebody wants to come in here and take two 48 racks worth of hard drives, <laughs> uh, it's going to take a bit of effort. Cool, I'm picking up on the chat here. 
Uh, Rob, how's your signal? Sound check. I'm sure. How's That's signal? pretty darn good. <laughs> All right, let's go with that for a moment. Um, just on these things, um, I I can hang around the encryption people. I know a lot more about the less about the math, more about just the code and how you deploy it, how it's built in. DFS and other people do want to be a lot, so if you were sort of use cases of like, uh, it's just always been about how they actually want to use uh, You're cutting out, so sorry. Um, ah. Our new technology. Uh, noted, noted, noted. Um, Ah, Santi, you have a question in chat. Okay, what does ZFS support look like to cloud providers? Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, this is from um, from the memo from uh, um, from earlier with the different topics. But I, I had been chewing this over for uh, for the last couple of weeks, and I just kept running into the same roadblock of like, oh, hey, wait a second, like, is this would it be fair to judge such and such versus such and such? Um, um like by virtue of they happen to offer freebsd and like a default config uh if that um and at what point is that less useful than just like a direct hardware comparison between one vendor and another um so like some kind of dedicated testing suite and then uh, i think i'll just build out an iso and then or build that a like a, just a vm and then try to export that out to different providers um and then give them a you know, check out their quirks and features and give them a Doug score. <laughs> uh, two points there. One is uh, we all seem to like ZFS, but if the cloud provider is providing something with far fewer guarantees, what precautions might want, want, one want to take, be it you know, mirrored images, just because you're getting some attempt at protections? and Virtual, that gets into the broader virtualization of ZFS topic. Um, but so for you, it's you're thinking providers that claim to support ZFS in some way. Is that accurate? Uh, well, that would be a very short list. <laughs> so, there you go. Okay. Uh, yeah. So my, um, I guess, uh, taking a step back, my um, motivation for this is largely born out of frustration with looking at VPS providers and then running into like DigitalOcean's documentation that was so good for when they offered FreeBSD uh, versus like, uh, okay, I guess you could use Vaulter. I guess this one's bring your own ISO. I guess Hetzner technically doesn't support it anymore, but they used to, and you can, it's like a one click install almost. Um, so to, so all this is born out of like, okay, I want to uh, write something that will be useful to somebody in that situation who says, hey, I want a FreeBSD or I want a, uh, like, not specifically FreeBSD, but I want to be able to have a, a machine with ZFS in the cloud doing ZFS things. Typically, that could mean FreeBSD, but it can also mean Lumos or any number, yeah, or just yeah, ZFS yeah. on Linux, you know, and, and so on. Um, so to come up with, like, a simple testing suite or something that I can, even at the cost of building it out or using um Ideally, something like a deep penguinator or, or what have you, but it's just like, here's a pre-built list of tools um, so that somebody could look at that and say, oh, if I use this here, the experience should be better, worse than X or Y. I have a sick academic question. Is there any way to, deter to through latency or otherwise, to determine if a Z pool on a device, I guess beyond looking at serial numbers, et cetera, is, you know, backed in a certain way, be it, oh, that sounds like sharded storage, or uh, who sharded, or uh, uh, thinking out loud here. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you nailed a topic from a few hours ago on the FreeBSD Enterprise Working Group call, which was Azure had an epiphany one morning when they thought, found that 
all these Linux VMs turned out to be FreeBSD VMs, so that they were severely undercounting FreeBSD and possibly Illumos virtual machines in their cloud. So with, you know, you mentioned DigitalOcean reducing FreeBSD support. Well, it's like, ah, yeah, but what if people are running it and you, they just don't count it as such? So, yeah, so that, that happens in, um, in a uh, business I used to work at up until yesterday. Um, uh, okay. which is that uh, effect at a well-known BPS provider uh, that essentially, because I had asked these questions before and uh, they're, they're cauterized off. It's a custom custom yeah, deployment. Okay. We have no idea what's, what's going on in there. We don't want to know unless there's something from law enforcement. Um, and even then we don't really want to know. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that contributes to not really counting them at all. Uh, which kind of makes it a bit of a moot point when you go to the product people and you tell them, hey, I think there would be interest in this. And be like, well, is there explicitly interest in this? Like, well, can we count them? No, no not really. We could ask. Uh, but uh, not uh, not so much of that going on. Hmm. Um, it's basically assumed that it is something else, um, but uh, but not specifically counting one bucket. We don't even care. Like, like we have a well, we don't offer Windows BPSs, but there's like a well-worn path for getting those set up. Uh, sure. We don't even count those. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. It's kind of, yeah, right. It, uh, anyway. uh, I'll put they didn't even count Windows. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, like, uh, then what do we count? Yeah, that's not what the world looks like. Um, uh, briefly, I guess it's, is it PF that has OS detection and sniffing? I mean, don't get me wrong, could a VM sniff what its neighbors are and get some sense of how many, you know, what hosts look like? Just thinking, just thinking. Yeah, it's really no. on the mirror board. Okay. So it's more of a networking thing, I would guess, like how much they've exposed. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your mic there, but hopefully the answer to that question is no. In practice, uh, probably not. There's um. It's probably it's it's probably possible. If if there's anything out that they would push out to a public network, that could indicate that it's a default that it has certain defaults, then probably yes. At least uh, if you have a box in the same data center, um, allegedly in Minecraft, according to somebody I met once at a bar, <laughs> uh, in passing. <laughs> But I mean, with a number of these uh, uh, attacks that are slamming the, um, oh, what is it? The, why am I drawing a blank on it? So, some of the attack vectors I've seen, if you're in an environment that has multiple clients on it, you definitely could could do that way. I know it's not something we want to have happened though. So, yes, in a bad way. Got it. Um, I'm let's try and stitch in a comment I just read. Uh, where are we? Have our house will close. Uh, boom. Put it there. Others. I'll quote you here. My failures have. Work. Okay, going through the chat. Do, 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 found the talk. Ah, I'll put databases next to you. Uh, dash databases. Uh, show of hands virtually or whatever mechanism you want. Are are folks uh, who presents doing database work on CFS? Sounds like Eva, yes. And I know that all these tricks are indirectly. Like, hey, you, you put the uh, you put the Postgres index thingy here with this type of record size and da 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 da. Oh, there we go. Jan has a topic idea there. Uh, that's actually uh, I'm going to break out that topic. Um, yeah, I'm not a DBA, so I'm like gonna. I only, I only know what I've set up in the past. Databases—that's its own. 
valid topic. Uh, Ava, um, Andrew, thank you both. Uh, Jan, it sounds like Jan, you've hosted them. You have questions. Where do you sit on that? I'm sitting on another conference during the event. Ah, what does it conflict with? Hmm? Uh, does does this event conflict with another one? CFS, uh, you doing uh, no, just a. Uh, I will put your question there. Is there a be in the general topics? Sorry to bounce around like this. So, uh, so the problem I ran into is that uh, I used boot environments for an experiment and found out that once I switched the active boot environment, uh, Z -repl replication broke because it changed uh, uh, something. Uh, the inheritance so it couldn't match up the um, the it basically it says yeah sorry I don't know how to what to send where anymore or what to receive from yeah? so um, that's not nice uh, if you wipe it it will start backing it up again it will back up the other data sets in the snapshots but yeah you shouldn't have to wipe your backup to get to unstick it, uh, not even partially. And um, the other problem is if you create a new uh, boot environment snapshot uh, in Clone, it doesn't know that it is related to anything. And um, instead, it just starts to copy the full content. So it does. So if you have a, like a 20 gigabyte or so boot environment, uh, that means you're now replicating 20 gigabytes uh, to your backup destination. If it's over a home internet connection, that's quite slow. And the other problem um, is that um, I wanted to find out what's happening and why uh, it doesn't know that. And so I checked the ZPool history and the BECTL dataset creation, snapshot creation, whatever it did. Didn't leave a trace in ZPool history. Uh, you've got my attention there, um, Rob. And Rob just answered it. Yeah, okay. that, yeah it's not the kernel who uh, automatically records the action. It's the user space tools who use NiOctal to submit a log entry, basically, to the uh, ZPool history. So, yeah. Interesting. And Interesting. the ECTL in FreeBSD 15 uh, does not use those I opted, so it's missing them. It doesn't record the equivalent CFS commands to what it did directly in C. Ah, that's interesting. I wonder if it's different at all on our side. So BCDL on FreeSD uses uh, libcfs. Yeah, uh, yeah, versus the Illumo side. BEADM, I guess. Is that actually? Ah. And, uh, uh, the old uh, shell script version. Uh, of course, doesn't have that issue because it can't directly use the library uh, or misuse the library because it has to go through the commands. Oh yeah, that's a design decision which isn't interesting. Okay, isn't uh, what I would like to see. That yeah, it has a history, but you better hope that anyone modifying the full layout remembers to record it to the history. Yikes. Uh, that gives me a free NAS 10 slash back in so far as I'm testing it, testing it, testing it. I'm like, oh, I'll go check uh, the the Z pool history and there's no history. I'm like, uh, uh, kind of need that. <laughs> so yeah, very, very good point. Oh, Oh, no transportation issues for Rob. Hang in there. Hang in there. Um, okay. Uh, has anyone else seen issues where they didn't have logged history that they thought they would have? And oh, auditors love to hear that. Oh, we thought we had it. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. 
cool. Yes. And yeah, oh, come on over, see all my tabs. Um, okay. That's, uh, I'll put Z pool history as a broad, unclear topic in so far as I have sure been bitten. It sounds like you were just bitten recently. Uh, Z pool history, uh, was not mentioning. Oh, uh, no, B E A D M was it? Okay, I believe you said M. B E C T L, the new -E command. The new one, yes, I'm you're right. That is a Lumos land. Sorry, uh, C T L. Um, uh, how to keep uh, backups, and this is where Daniel can jump in. Daniel, have you jumped on uh, track? Uh, BE changes, switches, and it sounds like Eva, you've got a, some migrations to do. You'll take a peek at that. Uh, okay. Uh, Daniel? Question mark? Question, question. Okay. So, um, I will take a moment to just highlight more keywords here, so this is something I can find stuff in because it's growing and growing and growing. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, Rob, it sounds like you are offline. So something like user space, ZFS in all its forms. Uh, any news there in chat? Listening? No. Any news on user space ZFS interpreted precisely however you please? I'll let you munch on that question. Uh, I will nudge Matt. Do, do, do. Cool. Uh, Santi, do you have an ingredient list if one were to plan out carefully special things you need for an uh, Argentinian barbecue? Um, well, I was my thought process around that was just like, okay, there's probably a Hispanic supermarket somewhere nearby just as a function of population centers um and usually their uh, butchers tend to, tend to have stuff uh, laid out I'm mostly just thinking about like the sausages and things that are um but uh i don't know man i'm perfectly happy to just like head to costco right beforehand or you know sam's club or something just do it up uh, that way i have put uh i put like a minimum viable amount of thought into it <laughs> Well, the sausage about sausages. Exactly. <laughs> uh, with... Oh, yeah, you had said, um, uh, weren't you going to, what was the other half of that, that plan that we had come to? Oh, was the... liquids relating to that? Or... No, for uh, barbecue for grilling. So oh. that's something dragging out a smoker. Oh, Remember so right? there's an open fire pit weather pending. There is a gas grill and indoor kitchen so a few mm -hmm. options there and i can bring my smoker down too Sante, if you need it yeah i would not know what the, the first thing to do with it but thank you <laughs> I, I i was gonna i was gonna make my my smoked pork chili oh that's what it was yes ah, awesome. okay that, uh, that'll be an accent to whatever you want to you want to burn Uh, charcoal would be the only thing. Um, yeah, cowboy charcoal uh, is the one I usually buy out to okay. like Home Depot and stuff. A couple bags of that. I like that one. Uh, so we would have a grill though. Like, what's the like a? So there's a fire pit, but is there like a? There are about uh, yard wide, like two and a half to three foot wide, big, thick grill bars like almost like a campsite for what it's worth and two levels oh, um cool okay perfect and karen ritter made a good point that we should plan for about oh 60 40 omnivore and vegan food such that omnivores can eat vegan food i was like salad considering yeah. ask, so. asking if anyone has any special requirements Yes, and I believe the registration includes questions like that. And I had this panic about, uh-oh, we didn't ask, but 
fortunately, Karen got those in there before. Thank so, you for that. Of course. And uh, please advise. If the, grill is, uh, um, if the grill's that wide, it should be really easy. Like if people also have like a, like religious exceptions and stuff, we could keep a whole section. Just a lot. Literally two levels, tools. actually. Yeah. <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, I don't know what the specific rules are around are, are around smoke from oh, other stuff, yeah. but I'm choosing to ignore that unless somebody tells me I should care about it. Um, are there yeah, enough yeah. Uh, utensils? Uh, because it doesn't help much uh, if you use the same um, spoon and so on. Yes. Yeah, you, can't oh, good point. Same, <laughs> you can't use the same silverware. I don't think smoke has a requirement, though. I don't know specifically how well. But I have, I did live a while with someone who was Jewish, so I'm at least familiar with um, kosher laws, and usually the kosher laws and the halal laws are pretty close. So yeah, okay, okay. My my is definitely not kosher. Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure you're uh, uh, you're thousand <laughs> percent? You could make them with duck this year. I'm sure that would be yeah. an experience. Okay, yeah, we duck, are duck is actually straying, quite tasty. Straying from the core topic, but yes, let's put, kick this into working group territory. Um, so, food ideas, options, requests, keep them coming in whatever uh, channel you feel is appropriate. Uh, other topics, I I know that to cover some of these would be fantastic. There's a set of working group talks right off the bat. Very useful. And I, again, I want people prepared. And if it's like, hey, here's the repo for the conference and here's the hardware on site to test against, let's do that. Um, uh, of those, ARM64 is of unique interest to me, although it may be completely transparent to ZFS, ideally. It's like, well, who cares what the underlying architecture is unless there's some bizarre blocker. So that would be of interest um santi does that mean you have a neat cool opportunity or you have tons of sp spare time to work on the event uh hmm. this will probably need up a lot of time <laughs> hmm i'll just throw that on there as a hypothetical topic cool okay uh bah, 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 bah. travel support yes that's i have the notion of fundraising for travel that is on my radar. Uh, there are various open and private conversations on that, on like, oh, what are individual needs and how do we help out our fellow developers? So watch the space on that. And I will make a note there. Uh, not so I much guess... a, Go ahead. I was gonna say not so much a travel thing, but I mean, kind of relate, related, but um, as far as if I, assuming I can come out there, which, like I said, I'm pretty sure I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hotel room with two beds. Oh, yes. I only need uh, one because the option is going to be a really big bed or two. So yeah. I might as well get two and someone. So there will be an additional bed from that. So I wanted to bring that up. Yes. Uh, got that said. Uh, does could people just blurt out their desired cost per night target or budget or limit or minimum? <laughs> like, gee, it's got to be under seventy five bucks if there is such a thing in twenty twenty four. Or hey, anything you know, one twenty five is fine. Uh, because I love the notion of a a common hotel not that there is an obvious one that's super close to the venue and hey that's the place to be there are fortunately a lot of choices in town and the a few airbnbs in the hills and i've heard of people coordinating those for like ietf and other events so uh target room price someone blurt out a number please when i was looking yes the oh where did it go Say maximum. Sorry, my tab, some of my tabs have expired. Huh, no worries, especially travel ones. Oh, plus one party house. Oh, Rob. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, and the Australian suggests that I get nervous. I think the rule is eleven o'clock quiet time in 
the city of Portland. Uh, so room sharing, Air B. And not this is not an uh, a marketing thing, but Airbnb or similar, whatever's. I in think. Uh, it looked like University Palace Hotel and Conference Center. Yes. Was pretty reasonably priced to me, or at least for me, as part of a package deal. Yes. It was going to be something like total for the the period was was less than seven hundred bucks. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so that was a candidate location for the final uh, meet BSD, and so I I've toured it. It's nice. The University of the PSU purchased an old hotel nearby, and so they've made a They've made their upgrades. They have a nice little conference center. So that one is also on quite a few transportation tracks. So that uh, was I hope why it came up with some... my attention as it looked like it was. Uh, okay, then I'll I'll put a link somewhere as that being a good candidate. Of course, hopefully they don't have like some big event that exact moment, but if they don't, then that's a great option. Note the PSU hotel. Okay. And if you've got a link handy, drop it in. Otherwise, I'll add it later. So uh, there's that. So uh, is there anyone who has really worked Airbnb and friends or not? I don't know, whatever the heck the other one is. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I've done it once or twice. I don't know how to what to look for, what not to look for, etc. So if if anyone is an expert at that and party houses to quote the chat, let me know. I mean, the uh, the other option. And I'm, you know, this probably that won't work as well as it has with other groups that I've been with is doing something like a Vimo or Airbnb or something like that. Verbo, that's and it. You just get, right. yeah, and you just get a lot of people. Everybody said everybody can get their own room, but it ends up being cheap. Yes. I haven't done it in the Portland area, so. Okay, noted. And, uh, if people are willing to say not rely on public transportation, but a few minutes or miles of 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 Lyft and Uber, is that something I should look into? What? The developer shed. Although I mean, my, Portland has a lot of options and place to walk around, do things. Go ahead, Andrew. My initial thought was 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 renting a vehicle if if parking wouldn't be a huge problem but it sounded like it's probably not a good plan and so just staying uh, on public transportation sounded like a better plan from what you were saying yeah i'd say public is quite good in portland the vehicle would be no issue at the venue it would be a pain in the butt downtown fossey was at the university same one psu and uh parking is cheap during the summer when there's no one there i'll leave it at that but it's probably a lot harder in winter. So I didn't leave it at that. Okay. Uh, so now it's like the UIUC area. Rob would prefer PT as a rule. Oh, public transportation, I'm guessing, as he's literally having connectivity issues jumping on a bus. Okay. And <laughs> thank you, Rob. You are you you said it without saying it. Uh yeah. And cars are expensive and deposits and you name it. So Portland's very good about that, which says to me, I'll just make sure. All the appropriate TriMet links and such are out there. Um, please do not hesitate to send questions you have as simple as like, gee, what does parking in Portland look like? There's Parking Kitty, which is a thing with an app and you push in a push a button and this and that and you're paid. Um, you, hotel parking, yes. Um, well, this gives me some homework and this is a week of mine to work on this. So. Uh, other as, thought questions, ideas? Go ahead, Andrew. As far as public transportation goes, um, I know in some of the systems I've used, they have, they'll have they have like a five-day pass kind of thing. Do they have anything like that in the Absolutely. Portland area? Yes. Oh, yeah. they do? Because I wasn't able, able to find something like that. If, oh, if, if uh, I could get a link for, for something like that, that'd be awesome. Okay, and way back in the day when, okay, so way back in the day, the I think the light rail was free in downtown, uh, and our friends at OzCon would actually just say, here are, you know, 
free, you know, two day, one day passes or two day passes, et cetera. So that is a very, very good point. One day slash week, uh, weekly DYA passes, PS. Excellent. So uh, if there's budget for it, it may be a question of just like, hey, here's a, here's a set of those, grab one if you need one. Uh, and I don't know if they expire or they expire within a year, so they're not a dangerous investment that are like preset for that exact time. Anyway, um, Ava has um, ah uh, yes, I recall that Ava. We yeah, we have a lot of topics to talk about. Awesome. So, above all, don't hesitate to hit me with your questions. Uh, that is. Oh, Rob, you still out of uh, communication? Just Rob, for the back of your head, did you get since we spoke anywhere on the Alan Jude Union FS like idea and contraption that he worked on? So think about that. I'm probably your guy for user space. Uh, you'll take another look. Awesome, thank you, and thank you for the feedback on user space. You are the resident developer of the day. Um, this is exciting. I'll leave it at that. Uh, I will do a little research into the supermarkets. I did, this part of town is super easy to get around, so visiting things and such are not hard. Uh, if I'm a good boy, I will simply go down and you know, take the bus from point A to point B and say, this is how you do it, and here's some pictures. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, Anything else? This is your call, not mine. Okay, and yeah, Ava, let's chat. Yes. Uh, test frameworks. Yes, Jan, what you got? Um, one of the things that came up repeatedly uh, during my jail experimentations is that there's no good tool to declaratively specify how you want a jail file system layout. Hmm. So that you can say, I want this file system to exist. I want this to be a clone of that. If it is not, destroy it and clone it again. Because if it's out of sync with the upstream. So that you can have a description of how the, the different file systems should go together. What's, what's cloned from that? what's uh, supposed to be created. Maybe it's a port for tempfs as well. So that you can just, because j.conf doesn't do it, a simple fs top doesn't do it for you. Especially the quickly fixing it up. You can do it in shell, but it's a lot of shells. Good thing it's dangerous shells with you because it has to involve by design ZFS destroy. Um, Ooh, okay. Uh, do you nest your data sets on j? Like not at, for what individual jail or zone would you be having a separate user, et cetera, or is it just one parent? Depends uh, on what I do. Sometimes I just have a single data set. But for what uh -huh. I was experimenting with, um, I wanted to have uh, read only clones for the base system, different read only clones for the a set of packages, and then uh, a different set of file systems for persistent data. And those should, of course, not be destroyed when I want to uh, replace the clone of the base system with the one of the latest patch level. And it should be fast enough to run that you can run it at, on every jail startup. So that Okay. And I guess I answered my question. If you do have selective persistence, you would indeed be nesting. Uh, yeah, you would do uh, something even crazier. You would have uh, a layout like I described it in the jails call where you you have the jail data set, which is unmountable. Then you have for each type of data set, like base system, packages, persistent data, uh, you have another unmountable uh, data set there. Uh, and you set its jail, its mount point of the nested unmountable one to the root directory of the jail. And then you create new data sets under these root directory for var db something and so on 
to create uh, unmountable parents as required. And now you can just mount them all and you get the layout. But because of this double indirection of having a per chain parent and then a per type parent underneath that, um, with the jail unmountable file system as a grandparent of the actual data set, this now breaks the parent child relationship between uh, persistent data and the um, root directory of the jail, for example, so that you can easily destroy uh, the let's call them stateless or immutable uh, data sets for binaries, um, like a base system or packages, and just recreate them uh, as needed, without yes. having to uh, untangle the ZFS uh, parent-child relationship first. Does Docker have a super nifty Layout descript storage layout description language that probably has no sense. Not that I know of. Yes. Okay. Can anyone think of lay, uh, storage description languages, for lack of a better term, different from, I guess, like you said, an FS tab? I mean, like there you, you could, just say, I've got the. I argue that the, the uh, container storage, uh, so CSI, is expressive enough. Interface, but uh, it's the really way to send. Uh, say, I want this, I want that. Yeah. Very, very generic way. It's basically, can you encode it as JSON? If the answer is yes, then you can funnel it through uh, the container storage uh, interfaces API. But you have would have to write a, a Special purpose DFS uh, provider for that, mm -hmm. um, which wouldn't just be useful for FreeBSD jails, but for any operating system with proper ZFS support. I've had this notion in the back of my head for years: storage description language. What does that mean? I don't know, but I totally see how. Uh, yeah, uh, you generally want to rinse and repeat when you're deploying deploying containers <laughs> such that when you have the benefits of ZFS, you you want to get creative and consistent and guarantee consistency and perhaps even be idempotent. So uh, maybe you and I should look into what does exist and what could inspire us. Um, but ah, thank you for reminding me of that. How about that? Um, and Greg can linger. Cool. So how about that is some excellent food for thought. I am back at my desk this week and let's uh, just keep it all coming. It is uh, just before the hour. Anything else at this time or shall we call it good? Okay, y'all are muted. Who wants the honors? Press subscribe and click the like button. Yes, there's a variation. <laughs> Your fan is noisy as ever, but your message is clear. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you soon.